After a long week of nice, unseasonably warm weather, it looks like a storm system is going to be making its way into the Great Lake re region that could have some snow impacts. In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, what, we're, what we see right now, what the potential is for this storm, as well as where we'll be going, and it will be a lot colder after this. Hello, everybody. The time is... 2.41 p.m. and it is November 16th. Welcome to another update for Great Lakes weather. Hopefully everybody's doing well today. And again, it has been a very quiet stretch of weather. We've had some nice warm weather. Temperatures in the 60s, almost 70 degrees today here in lower Michigan. And it does appear that that weather has been continuing across much of the Great Lakes region this past week. Now that's going to change. And it will change right around Thanksgiving. Okay, So the Thanksgiving holiday looks to have some impacts with some possible winter weather. But right now it looks mainly in the form of rain. We're going to dive into all of that, but let's get right to it here with the latest from the Euro model. Again, there's been some issues with the Euro model today, so we're, we have the most recent model run that shows us what's going on. And again, before I start anything with this video, keep in mind that this event is still seven days out. So the fact that it is six to seven days out means that there is still likely a lot that's going to change with this system. So places that you see snow may not see snow. Places that you that see rain may not see rain, rather might see snow as well. There's still a lot to be trimmed out with this setup that we have here. But we're just gonna dive right into um, what is going on. Again, this right here is a continental view of the 500 millibar height anomaly. So you can see um, these are showing pressure changes in the upper levels of the atmosphere, which have an impact on the movement of pressure systems across the globe. So um, what you have here is right now this large ridge that's been sitting over the United States and it's been continuing to just kind of uh, keep things warm over the Great Lakes region over the past couple of days. Um, that's going to start to weaken. And again, you see this trough that's starting to dip into southern Canada and start to get into Michigan. Now that will bring us some rain tomorrow. So there'll be a brief shot of rain tomorrow. Um, I won't expect that to really last though for too long for our area. And then you see another ridge kind of building back behind this. And notice down here you see a you see a trough that kind of deepens and kind of sits over southern United States. This trough is actually going to carry along with it a low pressure system that will surge to the northeast ahead of another push of cold air that's going to come in from the north between these two ridges in here. Again, um, when you see two ridges kind of separated in this way, you're likely going to see a um, shot of cold air kind of shoot through that region. And that's what we're going to see, okay? It's a surge of cool air making its way um, in between these areas of high pressure in the upper levels and going to deepen quite significantly as it gets into the Great Lakes region on Wednesday of next week. So you can kind of see um, that shade of white there. That is some, that is a much lower pressure aloft, which indicates high pressure on the ground. But again, that is in the presence of sinking air. Okay, So that means there's going to be quite a bit of sinking air associated with this with this storm that's going to be moving through. And again, as that low pressure system moves through, as that um, upper level disturbance deepens, you're going to have a lot of um, movement of air associated with it. It's going to be really windy with this storm that moves through. The question is, who's going to see rain? Who's going to see snow? And it's really hard to break that down at this current moment because there's just so much with this setup that is too right now too difficult to determine. But let's go to Let's free stream it on the hour that we're set to right now. This is on Wednesday at 7 a.m. across North America. We are going to zoom in specifically onto the Great Lakes region at this point. Now you can see this trough is very deep. It's particularly over Michigan as the storm moves through. Look at the temperatures at 7 a.m. Wednesday morning. Going to be much cooler. Temperatures in the mid-20s. Um, you have a dendritic growth zone that's present with this as this system moves through. And again, dendritic growth zone is that area where um, that water vapor can attach to um, just different particulate matter in the atmosphere and create those snowflakes that we have. So again, that dendritic growth zone is going to be present at a low level between 3,000 and 5,000 feet. I would not be surprised if there was going to be some lake effect snow on the backside of this low as this trough surges through the Great Lakes region. But you do notice pretty much going to be impacting the entire Great Lakes region at this point. Lots of places going to be seeing much cooler air. Um, and now, again, I think the snow is not really going to make it down to Indiana and Ohio. That cold air is afterwards, though. I do think the lake effect snow potential is going to be settled over 
portions of western Michigan in particular, maybe parts of northern Ohio as well. Notice that temperature drop that's from the surface all the way up to about three kilometers in the atmosphere. That temperature drop will also impact the lake effect snow that we have and that will occur. And again, keep in mind the lake temperatures at the surface are still war relatively warm as well, which again, notice here, you do have a um, dendritic growth zone present and you also have some instability that's present in the atmosphere given that the lake temperature is going to be warmer. So I would not be surprised to see some lake effect snow. And who knows, maybe um, there will be a decent enough setup for some water spouts. Lapse rates are going to be pretty, pretty steep, pretty ridiculously steep, around 8.9 degrees Celsius per kilometer. So that's something that could really influence that potential as well. We'll have to check with the water spout service later on as this comes out. Because again, there's still a lot to be trimmed down with this. But the, so the associated stor storm system on the southern edge is actually going to bring severe weather down to the south next week. So again, as we get into, I believe, Sunday and Monday, you do see that severe weather potential that is kind of setting up across parts of Oklahoma, Arkansas, um, Mississippi Valley, those places, looking to see some potential for severe weather. Um, and again, that is something that's not too uncommon to see for this time of the year. Now, again, here's the wind gusts as this storm moves through on Wednesday into Thursday. As it lifts off to the northeast, you can see that there's some uh, stronger winds embedded in these on the eastern side of this storm that's going from southwest to northeast. And then um, on the back side of it, we get those winds moving through as well. You got wind gusts and up to close to 40 miles per hour in some spots across Michigan, Indiana, and Ohio, um, in even parts of the Upper Peninsula as well. Lots of lots of wind with this associated system that's going to be moving through as it passes through. Let's take a look at what precipitation we're expecting. Uh, again, I'm not going to say that it's a it's definitely not a sure thing. There's going to be a lot that's going to change at this point. But here's what this recent ECMWF model is putting out for this storm. This is Friday's storm, so again, all of it we're really expecting with that is mainly some rainfall, maybe some heavier pockets of rain as that moves through. Um, again, not really expecting too much there. As that moves through, you'll get a little burst of colder temperatures um, behind Friday's system. Um, and as we get into Saturday afternoon, you will notice that the temperatures um, in areas across southern Michigan are going to range in the more in the 40s, which again is probably a bit more um, accurate at this point um, for this time of the year. But temperatures will be dropping below average. So, and this, a lot of it has to do with this storm system that's moving through and the deepening trough on the back side. You do see that trough. Um, making its way down, and here's the low pressure system. Now, notice here that it's mainly focusing that it's going to be mostly rain, and I think that's probably likely what's going to be the case. Keep in mind, you do have a dendritic growth zone that is at 14,000 to 16,000 feet, but again, the temperatures are going to be well above freezing as you get to the surface, according to the latest Euro model. Now, again, a few temperature changes in any of any portions of this region between um, the surface and 6,000 feet will have a good impact on the type of precipitation that we will see. But right now, it does say the best guess precip type is snow on this model sounding. But really, when you think about it, the temperatures are going to be in the upper 30s. It could possibly melt and become more of a um, cold, just a cold rain at that point. But again, a few, temp a few temperature shifts with the next few models could could influence that as well. You, know, you do notice, though, the Upper Peninsula really starts mostly off with just snow and going to get a good deal of snow, um, possibly. And notice the dendritic growth zone associated with this setup. You have temperatures in the mid-30s, dendritic growth zone between 8,000 and 12,000 feet, um, a little bit thicker, which again will enable. And look at the dew points, how tight they are matched up with each other. That indicates the potential for some heavy snow with this system that could be moving through. And then you do notice that lake effect snow setup that will come in on the backside by Wednesday morning. So the, the initial system looks like it's going to move in uh, Tuesday um, and then kind of move out of the area. And then that lake effect begins on Wednesday as that pressure system still deepens off to the north. And then again, you see the isobars really close to each other, that indicating that there is going to be some strong winds with this storm system as well. So going to be a mixed bag of weather that could be coming um, for your Thanksgiving holiday and again could have some impacts on travel if that snow region drops far to the south. Right now it doesn't look to be too significant but again we're putting out a video just because you know this thing could amount to something if it if models do change in that general vicinity. So here's what the GFS is putting out also for this as well. Um, you can kind of see, um, let me zoom in more on a regional graphic here. 
And you notice that the isobars, um, as we move through this on Friday, you see that rain system, similar to the ECMDF, what it's putting out as well. Um, progressing it forward, you do see kind of a similarity, um, but you do notice the GFS does push the snow farther to the south, and it does not deepen the low pressure system as fast also as well, so it's not moving as quickly either. But again, it doesn't put out as much snow um, as the Euro does in some spots also. But still a thing to keep in mind, uh, there could be some snow getting as far south as southern Michigan, maybe even into northern Indiana. There's still a lot at play with this system, so no, I'm not confirming anything just yet. Not even going to do anything about snow totals just yet because we still do not have a firm grasp on what is going to happen. Looking into the long range as we get closer to the beginning of December, there is the potential for maybe another storm to clip our area, and that one might produce more snow for much more of us near the end of the month. But again, that's getting into the long range, so it's just something to just keep an eye on at this time and that storm might probably will not be present in the next model run so um, here's again a climate outlook from the climate prediction center again temperatures are below average which again it's an El Nino season again keep in mind that in an El Nino season this type of thing is still possible okay because again the weather the climate patterns um, do have influence on what the weather is going to do but again the weather is more um, sporadic than climate patterns are in itself. So keep in mind, it will, temperatures will drop below average. We will see temperatures that won't get above freezing some days as we approach the Thanksgiving holiday. So hopefully everybody has a happy Thanksgiving. Um, we'll probably do another video before then, um, especially if this, especially if models uptrend the storm to make more snow. But just something to put out there just for now. Make sure to subscribe and stay updated. I'm going to do some more videos about this later on. And, you know, if it comes down to it, if things turn out to be pretty good, maybe we'll head out to the lake and um, see some lake effect snow pockets and maybe even some thunder snow. Would not be surprised if that instability does follow suit with this setup. So thanks so much for watching. Hopefully all of you got some benefit, and I'll see you all later.